Greetings to all the good ladies and gentlemen who are so kind as to watch my weird progress and attempt to work on these various vehicles. As you can see, I have transported a majority of my fleet of cars. Though it is not complete, we are still missing three to my new location. As such, I'm going to do something that's a little bit unusual. I'm going to go through each vehicle and point out what it needs for work and then ask for opinions on which one I should work on. Let's start here with the 66 Imperial LeBaron. The carburetor needs work and it has some electrical issue that last time I drove it caused the dash to start smoking. Oddly enough it didn't impact how it was running. There's some weird wiring going on under the hood. It's mostly piddly repairs but little things that'll take time and not exactly something camera worthy. The next project, the DeLorean here still has the slight miss in one of the cylinders which I suspect is the aftermarket technology wiring. It's also got the problem where all of the brakes are dragging and this major issue here with the frame. Other than that it does run but I would have to replace the front end of the frame section in order to get it back on the road. Then there's here, the Camaro project I was working on for my wife. On the inside, this one's really looking pretty good now. I got the seats all done, new gauges, new dash, but I'll show you where the problem lies. It's missing just one thing to be ready to go and reliable. Beth in the hood doesn't like to... <laughs> yep. It's about one-third of the way through an LS swap. It needs the other two-thirds done. The dropping the motor in and plumbing everything up so it'll work. Then we move on to this one. The 95 Cadillac Fleetwood that's in just terrible paint scheme and colors. I have rewired most of the engine bay. It'll crank when you turn the key in. It'll run for a brief moment with starting fluid. It needs a fuel pump, a windshield, and some other bits of work. The 76 Sedan DeVille, while not the prettiest example by a long shot, it needs a carb rebuild. The hood hinges need to be adjusted. I've sprayed the ever-loving bejesus out of them, because if you know anything about these cars, the hood hinges are insanely expensive. I've also put on a new alternator. That was necessary. So, this one needs a carb rebuild. Ugh. It is easily the least labor intensive vehicle around here. Then we'll move on to the 54 Packard. Tires are shot. Interior is still decent. Oh, it's a, it was a nice car back in its day. Let's check under the hood and I'll show you what's going on here. As you can see here, I've gotten a large portion of the engine uh, disassembled and working on, but the cylinder head refuses to come loose. So I'm stuck trying to figure this one out because the motor's locked up tighter than a bank or than my spending if my wife had any idea how much I'd put towards all of these vehicles. But, I've put the new hood ornament on it. I have the replacement bezel there. I've changed out the front lights. A little bit of work happens here and there every now and then. Then there's the pair of Imperials. This is probably, as much as I hate to say it, the most labor-intensive project I've got. This one I've got some work done. I just had to pile the parts in working on prepping for a new interior. I got the shade wrong on the dash pad, but this one has an uncracked windshield. The paint on it is terrible, but I just put something on it because it was primered and I didn't want it to rust. Between the two of these, I'm trying to determine which is the better car and combine them into one. Then last project here is the Rolls Royce, which if you'll notice, 
looks quite a bit different than the last time I posted a video of it. I've been working on the color, trying to get it to look a bit more presentable. And the people who are supposed to fabricate four custom items I needed for it, a gas tank, well, diesel fuel tank, oh, that'll actually fit down and connect into here, have not gotten back to me. And this, this absolutely wonderful fact that if you look inside the door, the entire thing oh, is actually made of wood. The center pillar here, wood. I believe it's oak, but that doesn't exactly do me much good when in order to get the body to a sound point, I have to rebuild the entire wooden structure like it were a car from the 1920s. And this example was made in 1950. So I'm most likely going to fabricate something close to a roll cage and just put the door skins on steel because that's about the only choice I have. That's also why there's damage down here to this portion. But, aside from a crude overspray, which my wife did a wonderful job helping me with, this car is at least getting back together. If you'd care, please leave a comment and let me know which vehicle project you think I should get to. Be it the Chrysler, the DeLorean, my wife's LS swap project that I'm doing all the work on, the 95 Fleetwood, the 76 DeVille, 54 Packard, Imperials, or the Rolls-Royce. The Mercedes 6.9 still has yet to make it here, as well as the 64 LeBaron and the 60 Plymouth. I have not gotten rid of any of those vehicles. I, at the present, do not intend to pick up any more. And I'm actually not looking to sell off any cars because... While the market is ridiculously high and I could make a profit on every vehicle I've got, it would be annoying to try and find some of them, especially like the DeLorean, for what I've got into it. At present, I have less than five grand into this car. This one, I've got about nine into. Two grand. About 3,500 for the pair of Imperials. Ten grand on the Rolls Royce. Thousand dollars. 2500 on the Packard and 2500 on the Cadillac. Paid two grand for it and stuck 500 miscellaneous in. But please give me your feedback. Let me know where to continue and you'll see progress on whichever one is most popular on my next update. Thank you. Bye.